Welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. And today I'm going to compare this Finercy signal generator, the SG003A, to the HT8051 process calibrator that's been in the last few of my videos. Finercy do call it a signal generator, but it pretty much does have the same functionality as the HT8051 here. Um, however, this little unit I picked up for £65 in the UK, whereas this HT8051 retails for £650, so this is 10 times cheaper. But if you look at the basic specifications for this, this is a 0.1% accuracy, whereas this is 0.02% accuracy. So 10 times cheaper, but 5 times less accuracy out of it. And that can give you an issue depending on exactly what you're doing. And this transducer that I have here, standard Sinex I538, that's a 0.5 class. So if I want to check the calibration of that, I need to be at least three times, preferably getting on 10 times more accurate. So this will be five times more accurate. So in actual fact, I could use this. Obviously that's got way more accuracy. Both of these units are okay for the Sinex. The iStat 300 here, uh, differently, is actually a 0.2% class. Um, so this is only two times more accurate than the iStat. So I can't really use that to check the calibration of that. I could check functionality with it to see if it's basically functioning okay, um, but not a true calibration that I could do with the HT8051 there. The way around that, of course, is if you've got more sophisticated test kit like I've got here, uh, that is way more accurate and you can prove that this is performing better than the basic specification and you can keep doing that then yes I could well use it for the iStat 300 there but we'll find out how accurate it is in a few moments I'll just go through the kit itself first it comes in two trays in this cardboard box and along with uh, a wee little operating manual as well uh, which is quite a nice uh, quality manual to be honest uh, it's got all the uh, information in there that you need, the specs that you've got there, and each of the functions that it can do. So not a bad little manual at all, only in English. I presume they do the other languages for the countries that they send it to. Bottom tray, we have here the power supply, which is obviously a European style plug, not much use to me, but it's a standard USB A outlet on there. So that can easily be replaced or you get the adapter to use with that. You get the lead for charging as well, which is standard USB-A on one end and USB-C on the other that plugs into the bottom of the unit there. So you can charge the internal battery up in that manner. And then leads, you get four leads with it, uh, yellow, blue, red, and a black. And these are around about a meter-ish long I would say, yeah, about a metre long. Uh, crocodile clip there, hard wired onto the end, and four millimetre plug at the other end. Obviously, you notice it hasn't got the safety shroud on this uh, that you see on a lot of instrumentation nowadays. The plugs on these um, are not safety shroud compatible. So, if, if you don't like that little crocodile clip or you want to use something else, you'll need to get your set of leads. I think these are from Cleek which are all over Amazon and eBay in the UK. Obviously non-shrouded, they will plug in dead easy and then you can, at the other end, you can put whatever probe tip or uh, crocodile clip or whatever you desire at that end. Um, alternatively, if you haven't got those, you can get little adapters that will convert to the safety shroud and they will go in. Um, so that's another way. Uh, if you haven't got a set of leads available that will fit into these, so that's two trays there, and out of the way, and obviously it does come in this little box as I said. Uh, there is no bag with this, uh, unlike the HT8051, uh, just come with its leads and its charger, but it comes with a great big case as well. Um, so no case with this Finercy unit. And you can see the units themselves, uh, quite a bit of difference in size there, isn't there really? Uh, but screen wise, yeah, yeah you've got about three quarters of the size of the screen on uh, this one um, and it is fairly readable much better readable than this one really 
and the backlight on this, if you've seen the other videos, it's pretty atrocious. So uh, this one doesn't suffer from that at all. And color screen as opposed to the normal LCD screen for an instrument there. So that's two instruments. We'll hook it up to the test set and we'll see how well we can get it to read. I'm gonna have to. So we're all set up to test the measurement capability of these two instruments. We're on four to 20 milliamp loop and we're putting in 4.001, 3.998 on HJ051 and 3.99 on the SG0038. Notice we've got an extra decimal point on the HT8051 that's missing off of the SG003A there. Now let's go up to 8 milliamps. 7.95, 7.98, creeping out a little bit now. Smack on 12 on the key three there. Let's go 16, 15.999. Oh, interesting. We've gone 16.02 on the SG0038. It's gone the opposite way, hasn't it? 15.987 uh, on the HT. And the final 20 milliamps. 20.0102. Uh, 19.985. Okay, so we've switched things around. We've got our multimeter now running on amps. That's uh, picking up 4.005 milliamps at the moment. We've left our HT8051 reading as well, so that's reading 4.002 at this moment in time. And our finesse says we're putting out exactly 4 milliamps. Um, we do have on this uh, presets, so I can go, uh, we need to, so there's, you've got four presets on each of these here, which is on, we're now on 20, uh, which is 19.995 on the HT, uh, but 20.003 on the meter, which is pretty accurate, isn't it? I like that. Uh, three decimal places coming on the output. Uh, uh, and then these are pre-configured, I'm back to 4 there, that's 16, which are 16.004, 15.997, okay, and then the other one is 12 there, 12.0023, uh, against 11.997 on the HT. Uh, but obviously notice I've only got four positions here, so I can't get to the 8 milliamps from this. So let's go back to 4 milliamps, we'll take the presets off, and then we can dial in whatever value we want. And 5, 6, 7, 8, so there's 8 milliamps, which is at 8.007 and 8.002 on the HT. So pretty good output specs by the look of that. And again, I'll uh, table it all up and we'll see how good they are at the end of the video. That's pretty much how it works. As you saw me playing around a little bit here, what this unit can do that this unit can't is it can actually uh, supply and read at the same time because the, the meter is permanently in circuit. So I can merely go, go the right way around, back on there, bring it on there, and then you can hopefully see, get the light out of it. Uh, I've got 8 milliamps going out, we're reading 7.99 on this as well. And then if I choose to change, we can do there's 12 there, 11.98, 14. So yeah, you can uh, check the instrument out itself, uh, which you can't do with the HT8051 as soon as you switch from measurement to source, you lose the measurement capability. So that was the meter in milliamp mode. As the same as this HT8051, it can also output voltage mode. Uh, to change it to do that, I use the function function, go to the out, and then up here, depending on where you can see it, hopefully you can, you've got the options that you can put out here. So I can now go to uh, voltage mode here, and 
go on to that one and you see it's changed to voltage I've left it in presets so if I hit this in three there we go we've got 3.292 3.295 uh, what's that one there 12 volts uh, it's gone over on that not sure why that should be able to measure up to 24 okay so we've got 11.99 on the uh, Keithley there let's go back to 10 uh, it's in 10 volt mode then it's got 9.993 9 uh, what was that one 5 volts 4.994 4.997 4 so pretty good there so it can output voltage as well as uh, current uh, you can actually change the range so we've got 0 to 24 volts down there uh, you can change it to 1 to 5 volts 0 to 5 volts 0 to 10 volts or a user defined option in which case you can set it up there to whatever you decide up to 24 volts is the maximum capability of the unit um, you also have it can output a frequency as well that this can't do uh, you've got a pulse mode uh, PWM speed or Q pulse whichever one that is not sure what Q pulse is uh, so that's the output functions uh, go backwards uh, we, for the input functions you can change this just between a voltmeter and a milliamp meter there so we can change to a voltmeter if you want to and you can change the ranges for both of these interestingly enough it does actually have a calibration function down here as well um, so if you've got the right kit it looks like you can carry out your own calibration um, if you can work constants out and then you've got that for voltage um, and for milliamp as well calibration function down there as well for that one so yeah um, fairly powerful little instrument really uh, we've done Hertz, we've done, it does have a loop simulation mode as well I can't demonstrate that with the kit I've got um, but both of these units have a, a loop simulation mode um, so fairly even other than this being able to put out a uh, frequency output that this can't do that the HT8051 can't do um, they are fairly comparable with regard to programming also we had the three ramps that are available here on this you also have an auto output function um, on this one as well let's change me uh, back to milliamps and um, you can change this to a bunch of presets that this operated on don't want to be on the voltage do I so, so you can then put that on there and you can program this there we go 8 milliamps so 12 milliamps 16 milliamps 20 there and then it should cycle back down just waits for a bit longer so a bit more versatility in the preset of this um, because what you actually have as opposed to just fixed modes of this you can program this one um, so if we go to output and we can go down to the actual those are the preset values when I was uh, in, using this initially and I couldn't get to the 8 milliamps so you could program 8 milliamps into this at the expense of one of those if you wanted to um, but to get the programming function you go back up um, you've got all the options here that you can go down uh, the, do, do, no, let me get to that first so you can cycle it or just up or just down um, and then you've got all the points here for which to start at and to uh, how many points would be part of the program where it starts where it stops there what the step value is the time for the up step and then the stop time as well when it reaches the end of the cycle same settings for the down step actual timing and then the actual stop time at the end of the cycle again for that and you can do that I believe uh, let's uh, see can we do that yep yeah, we've got it for voltage on there as well in fact we've got a program for all the functions yep yeah, so you've got program and preset for all the simulation functions the 
pulse output, the voltage and the milliamp. So it is a little bit quirky the way you operate it, uh, but there is a fair bit of functionality once you've got used to it and you can uh, program it to your heart's content really. Um, it's quite a versatile unit. Yeah, pretty good value for £65 I would say. Pretty good value indeed. Uh, so that's the unit. I'll put the tables up now for the actual results of the measurements that I made just for the current. Um, and you can see as you take a look across them that the unit is actually better at sourcing, more accurate at sourcing the output current rather than the measuring of it. Um, we did see that whilst you were measuring it you did actually lose one of the decimal points. There's only two decimal points for the measurement instead of the three that you see on this HT8051. There's room for improvement there on the measurement function I think but sourcing it does seem to be pretty good. The tables that you see there that's just based around the actual percentage error of the reading. Obviously when you actually look at the specs of this um, it's, there is a percentage involved, um, plus or minus uh, five digits in actual fact. Yeah, I haven't tested it to see if it's actually within those bands as far as that goes, um, just what the actual overall percentage was for in terms of accuracy. As I did suspect, I would struggle to use this unit for on a 0.2 class transducer, but it'd be fine for a 0.5 class. As I said, if you're just using it for basic fault finding, uh, I'm sure it would be fine uh, just for doing that kind of thing with as opposed to actual specific calibrations. So yeah, quite happy with it really. Um, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.